everyone. So I hope you've had a great weekend. I just wanted to share my thoughts on something because I just had a very interesting conversation with hubby. If you've been around my channel long enough, you'll know that I am a supporter of BWE and I'm a divested black woman. Um, my husband is a black male. And so many of our conversations tend to be quite interesting because while we agree in a lot of ways, sometimes we have differences in opinion, which I think makes for healthy conversation. Politically, he's more of an independent, while I'm probably socially liberal-ish, but fiscally conservative, maybe even leaning to the right of conservatism, all right? So there are a lot of conversations online about ADOS and then this whole conversation about the Supreme Court case with uh, Comcast. Now, I know that a separate conversation uh, to be had in the courts is with Charter, but basically you have Byron Allen, a black male who offers certain TV programming, who is suing Comcast and Charter because he says that it's a violation of a civil rights law, I believe from 1866, for these two business entity, entities known as Comcast and Charter not to offer his programming. And to be honest with you, my husband and I have a bit of a difference in opinion. And before I go any further, I just want to let people know that part of the reason that I had to divest from many of these thoughts and indeed these conversations that exist amongst what we call Blackistan is because many Black people, specifically Black men, are not really willing to do what would be necessary to level the playing field. And so I felt that it was a waste of my time, energy, and resources to fight for something that ultimately the people most affected don't want for themselves. And so we were listening to some of the live streams or video uploads from the former TV judge, Judge Joe Brown, where he's been a bit critical of ADOS because he has said that they should not align themselves with Byron Allen in this Supreme Court case. And I was telling my husband that it's a bit of a reach for all of these news articles to suggest that this case would connect to things like fair housing and other civil rights laws because the reality is that you have a separate set of laws to address um, housing disparities and so on and so forth. And then also we have to uh, think about the fact that while there is a system of systematic oppression and racial discrimination, certain behavioral patterns amongst the black collective don't help the situation, such as the lack of a solid family and community structure. But what I was asking my husband, and I was like, I was like, we got to think about something. Byron Allen is a black man as an individual, right? Who, if he wins this case, and he gets the lawsuit and then the additional money that he would get through Comcast and Charter agreeing to air his programming, um, that would benefit him, which would be good for him and the white woman that he's married to. I said, but the problem would be that if Comcast had to pay out a lawsuit that would mean that they would have to find ways to get some of that money back. If you know anything about business, one of the primary expenses in business is payroll expenses. And I asked my husband, I was like, 
what would that mean for all of the black people who are employed by Comcast and Charter? And why are all of these people who are apparently um, supporting Byron Allen, uh, because according to them, they are supportive of the black collective, why are they putting the needs of one individual black man over the hundreds, if not thousands of black people who may be employed by Comcast and Charter and whose jobs would potentially be cut if Byron Allen won his case and Comcast and Charter had to pay out the, uh, the lawsuit money that he's asking for. So I did a little research. And when I say a little research, I do mean a little. But as of 2017, 21% of Comcast workforce is black people. So it's like, okay, if they have to pay this multi-million dollar lawsuit, like if they lose this Supreme Court case and they are forced as a business to offer programming that would not be beneficial to their bottom line as a business, right? So they'd be forced to offer that programming in addition to paying out this multi-million dollar payout. And as a result, they would have to cut staffing. What would that mean for the jobs of the 21% of its workforce that represents black people. And why are people who are claiming to be race loyal putting the needs of one individual black man who ultimately is making all this money that will not flow back into blackness, why are they putting his needs over the hundreds, if not thousands of black employees jobs who would potentially be on the line if he wins this case and why is it right that people automatically assume that if you're divested or bwe or if you're a black woman who is supportive of black women's personal life choices when it comes to dating and mating why is it that you're automatically assumed to be anti-black, right? But all of these black people who are putting the desires of one individual black man who's already a multimillionaire and for whom having a black family was not important because he married a white woman and he has biracial children, which is nothing wrong with having biracial children, but obviously the concept of... Um, racial equity and equality and so on and so forth for black men does not mean anything in terms of their individual life circumstances and their individual families. So why does he get to use the black collective to fight for his cause as an individual black man at the expense, potentially, of 21% of Comcast's workforce. Why are we not more concerned about preserving those jobs for those hundreds, if not thousands of black people who work at Comcast? And that does not include the number that work at Charter. Why are they not more important than the needs of a black man who's already a multimillionaire who is getting all this money and it's not going to flow back into blackness. And why does he, as a black man in an interracial marriage, get to rely on the support of the black collective when the black collective has made it very clear that if you're a black woman and you're in an interracial marriage or you are a black woman and um, whether you're with a black man or not, but you're a black woman and you don't think the way we want you to think and you don't say the things we want you to say. So you don't have our support. Why are we not calling that out? Why are we not saying, okay, well, I thought that you all said that black people who generally do not align with um, the pre-approved talking points of blackness don't get support. Why are you not applying this in the case of Byron Allen? And why do the needs of one black man 
matter more than the hundreds if not thousands of black people whose jobs would potentially be on the line if he wins this case. Let me know what you think in the comment sections. I'll talk to y'all soon.